Welcome back everybody, my name is Luis and I'm back with the next video of JavaScript Essential Training Series. In this video I'm going to teach you how to use arrays, how to create arrays and what is an array in JavaScript. So the array is an object that lets you store multiple values in a single variable. It stores a fixed size sequential collection of element. Array is used to store collections of data and it is awfully more useful to think an array as a collection of variable. So we are going to create an array. We're going to go to script.js file, and here I'm going to show you how to create. There are a few ways you can create an array. Well, let's look at the simplest way first. To create an array, we start with the keyword var. It's the same as creating a variable. Now I'm going to name my array. I will just say student name is equal to and if we were creating a single variable we could just type the name of the student right whether it's a string value or integer or boolean it does not matter but we are creating an array now how do we tell the compiler that we are creating an array we tell the compiler by adding these two square brackets and add a semicolon now we have successfully created an array but as we know that we can add multiple values in array according to the index space. So JavaScript index start from zero as many other C-based languages. So the first value is going to start from zero and then the second one is on index one and then so on. Now let's look at how to populate this array. We type the name of the array, which is a student name, and then add a square brackets. And within the square brackets, you need to type the index you want to add. So we're going to start from zero is equal to, and in the quotation, I will just type my name, student, and add a semicolon. Now we have added one value into student name array. We can add multiple values, so I will just copy this line and paste it a few times. All right, and now we need to change the index. So one, two, three, four, and we can change the values as well. So I'm gonna type Tom here. The second value I'm going to type my brother's name, Omer, and then we type something like uh, Aspen, and we can just say Bob, all right, I'm going to save the file. Now we have successfully created an array. We can access these values from an array according to the index. So how do we do that? The simplest way to do is type document. Well, I'm using the document.write method, which is a built-in method in JavaScript, but you can access this in any method you like. So let's just give you an example. And now I'm going to access an array by typing the name of an array, which is a student name, and add a square bracket. And within the square brackets, I'm going to type the index number I want to access. So if I want to access Bob, I will type 4 here. If I want to access a ways, then I type 0. If I want to access Omer, then I type 2. Let's access Bob. I'm going to type 4 and add a semicolon. Let's save the file. Let's save our index.html. I'm going to refresh this page and you will see that our JavaScript is writing Bob, right? Because we are writing by using this document.write method. And I'm going to change the value now. I'm going to change this to to save the file and refresh the page. And now we have Omer. So this is how you create a array. This is a very lengthy way, but there is a quicker way. There's a shorthand for creating arrays. You don't have to create a separate line for each index value you want to create. For that, I'm going to get rid of this document and we'll create another array, but I'm gonna use the shorthand this time. We start with the var keyword and then the name of an array. So, teacher name. I'm using a camel casing here. So the first letter is going to start from the lowercase and then the next letter, next word is going to start from the capital letter. So, teacher's name is equal to, and I'm going to add square brackets here, add a semicolon. Now, instead of populating this array in the separate lines by using the teacher's name as, as an array name and the index number and the value after that, 
I'm going to just type the values and automatic it's going to automatically be uh, sorted out according to the index so the first value which I have would be on index 0 and the second would be on index 1 third would be on index 2 starting from 0 let's do that I'm going to add a string value at index 0 so we'll just type computer and get out from the quotation now to separate this we need to add a comma and then whatever we type here that would be added as index 1 now we'll just type let's say mm, let's just say 100 so it costs 100 and add comma again and add a quotation and we'll just say cost okay and I'm just creating a random values here and then we can just say true you can even type true here okay let's save the file and now we have four different kinds of values here sorry three different we have two strings one integer and a boolean value now we can access this array the same way we did with that we're going to use the common method document.write well let me show you the alert one this time so alert and then alert with uh we can just type the teacher name and then the index what we want to access so i'm going to access let's say number two add a semicolon save the file and now if i refresh the page i should get that alert with the value of the index so that was just cost now if we type this to three we should get a true value let's run it and we got the true value so these two simple way to create an array now i'm going to show you some arrays created as an object first we look at what is an object what is the object oriented programming so javascript is an object oriented programming a language uh, can be called object oriented if it has the four basic capabilities to developers number one encapsulation second aggregation inheritance and polyformism so objects are composed of attributes if the attribute contains a function it is considered to be a method of the object otherwise the attribute is considered a property now how do we create an object we use the word new and i'm going to create a new array with a keyword new now let's go down here and we start with the keyword var and let's just say new array and then we can say is equal to and i'm going to type a new keyword and then array and then add parentheses and add a semicolon for those of you coming from other languages you might be familiar with the kind of array that's because array is an object there are special kinds of values that we are going to have a lot of dealing with and um, and although this formats saying a new array will work fine but you don't even have to try up the word new I would just simply delete that and this will do the same thing you might be wondering what is the size of an array how does JavaScript know how big is this array well you can officially create it with a size in this case let's type 5 and I'm saying the array should have five slots now, zero to four. But all the arrays in JavaScript are dynamic. They can be as big as you want. If you want something to exist at point five, you can do that. And you simply load into position five. And if you want it to exist at position 100, you can load into a position 100. While there is a theoretical fixed limitation to the size, so you're never gonna run into it. This is another way of creating an array, but my favorite way to create an array is by just simply using this student name and then add a square brackets. Now, because arrays are objects, they have the properties, and the properties means information that we can get about them so if i write a line of code that creates an array and loads it up with some initial values as in this case uh what i can actually do is use a name of the array and remember it's a uh, case sensitive and then with the dot sign and then i can access the length property let's do that so i'll type the name of an array which is teacher's name 
and then dot and these are all the properties we have so I'm gonna search for length and then add a parenthesis and there you go now with the help of this dot length method I'm accessing how many values I have in teachers name so we have four values and if we print it out it will show us that uh, this array got four values you could create our own functions a method to call in front of the arrays so if I create another function let's just do that quickly so I'll just create function and add name and then we can just simply write code goes here okay we're not gonna write any code inside but we're just gonna learn how to use it now I'm gonna use the teachers name again dot and add name and then add semicolon so as you can see we can add our own functions which could have a lot of complex functionality and we can use them on arrays because arrays are an object I'm gonna go to the, the reference because uh, you might be thinking where I'm getting these from dot, dot land that's the confusion I have whenever I learned a new language when I was like learning programming languages it was a big deal for me so I'm gonna go and search for let's say JavaScript object reference and let's see what we get now I'm gonna find well this is uh, W3Schools it's a best site I think for learning programming for the web development I'm gonna go all the way down here object references and then we have these so we are working with the arrays so far so we're gonna click on arrays and then in the array we have this array method so the method we used was length let me find that so it should be somewhere here whoa where is it okay it's on the top so length it sets or returns the number of elements in the array I was looking at it here that's a property so that's how you can learn more about uh, properties always whatever you're learning make sure you have the reference guide next to you so you look up, look up things and learn new things so we have all of these methods for us to use such as true string let me show you the true string which is another common one so let me just delete everything here we just work on one array and then here on index one I'm actually going to change this to let's say 10 and we can change this to 20 now we have all these integer values not a string values anymore so I'm going to change all of these values and then we will see how we can use the true string method now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna call the array student name dot to string method and then that's it so it's going to convert all of the values we have in this array to strings okay so these have some benefits well you're working on a complex uh, projects then yeah we will learn all of these uh, things in actual projects we will be doing in JavaScript in the later course so that's how you can use uh, methods and properties on the object as well there are obviously very simple example whatever I've shown you here we will actually look some practical ones as we go forward but the fact that arrays are object just means we can ask them to do things and very useful things in a lot of cases and if you are new to programming you might be tempted to think of that arrays uh, you're not going to use array that much well let me tell you arrays are everywhere in JavaScript you won't be able to get away from them you may create some yourself but a lot of them you will be given so you will have to deal with them for example you might at some point want to write a little line of JavaScript code which says I want to know how many anchor tags in HTML page how many links do I have and how many paragraphs do I have so what we can do for that I'm going to write a JavaScript let's say we are going to create another variable and let's say links links a 
is equal to, and then I can read the HTML document by writing document dot get element by tag name. You see this method, and then here I'm going to pass in a. All right, and now what it's doing, it's actually getting all the anchor tags what we have in this page. Well, we don't have any tags right now. But if we did, then it will get all of them and it will store them into an array according to the index. So there's so many things you could do with arrays and we will look at them in our project based tutorials. So that's it for this guys and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you join our Facebook group for programmers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.